Good morning, I'm Councilmember Ben Kalos. I'm a free and open source software developer. You can tweet me at Ben Kalos. In the spirit of this hearing, I'd like to thank our technology chair, Jimmy Baca. You can tweet him at James Baca 13, our land use chair, David Greenfield, at NYC Greenfield, and Chair Inez Dickens, who you can also tweet at IE underscore Dickens. I have three questions on the record for forwarding by this committee uh, for an official response following this hearing, which is, will do it be adopting an open 301 standard and how soon can we expect a tour for the council of the 301 facilities? This is a request that has been outstanding since August. Will do it agree to negotiate or renegotiate franchise agreements with Time Warner, Cablevision, and Verizon to provide free or low cost broadband to low income New Yorkers? Will do it expand free transit wireless on the 456, which supports one third of all subway riders, specifically stations along Lexington at 96th, 86th, 77th, 68th, and 59th, as well as Brooklyn Bridge for those of us who work down here. Uh, in the list that we were provided, it was noticeably absent that the green line was completely missing any of the free wireless except at 42nd. Uh, with regard to the line of question I wish to pursue in my three minutes and 44 seconds that remains, I'd like to talk about free and free libre and open source software. It doesn't mean that the free is free as in gratis. It means that it comes with certain liberties like the ability to see and modify your code as you choose. Does the general public have a right to government's general work products such as documents and public meetings like this one? That's a huge question, and I'm looking forward to sitting down and having a, a conversation around open source. Um, and in fact, I'll turn this over to Deputy Commissioner Sunderland in just a minute. But I think there's more to, there's a lot to I, I just wanted to do the quick thing of, does the general public own what government produces? What government produces, So our yes. work product. So th this, this document right here, does the general public have a, a right to this? I would say not necessarily. So uh, just let the record reflect that our, our committee reports for anyone watching online, you can go online, you can download uh, the testimony submitted by Do It as well as these documents and pretty much anything we create here in the council belongs to the public. Um, and so along those lines, I think software that we purchase should be along those lines. So we have these things called enterprise licensing agreements. It means we choose to purchase a lot of things from one specific vendor. So our finance department estimates that Doit is adding, added, adding $7.6 million for fiscal year 15-16 and has already added $3.5 million in November 2015 plan to the Microsoft Enterprise Licensing Agreement, bringing our five-year agreement to $108 million just for Microsoft. Uh, is that correct? Is, are we at $108 million for? That, that's over five, that's for our, fi including our fifth year, which is and ending in September. And is that through subcontractors or other contracts? Like every single dollar that Microsoft is getting, that comes out at 108. The, the ELA is yeah. directly through Dell, which is a reseller of Microsoft. Um, Microsoft's not allowed to sell directly, I believe, to anybody. Um, so, um, but the 7.8 million included um, one increase for our final true up. Yeah. which is where we've had increases, and also um, for uh, emails for the um, police are, offices. Now, are you familiar with the Independent Budgets Office November 2014 report, Budget Options for New York City, in which it uh, states, using use open source software instead of licensed software for certain applications, predicting a $6 million immediate savings increasing to $19 million. Are you familiar with the document? I'm not familiar with the document, but I've, um, I've heard the question before. Uh, how much can we save tomorrow by switching from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice, as mentioned by the IBO? And additionally, because I'm running out of time, uh, with the Adobe Enterprise Licensing Agreement, which allows us to print and read documents, we're currently spending $2.9 million. How much would we be saved by using an open source printers such as GhostScript coupled with a free PDF reader. And last but not least, would it do it support the free and, so free and open source software act, introduction 366, as well as civic commons, introduction 365, which would allow the do it and the city to collaboratively purchase with other municipalities, states, and governments throughout this country or the world to save money. So there were a lot of questions there. One is as far as uh, LibreOffice as opposed to on the Microsoft Office, 
How much could we save? That's a big question because there are still a lot of issues, I think, and I'm looking forward to the conversation with LibreOffice. Um, in fact, the last study I read of a major city in um, Europe who converted had a 1% error rate in the conversion, and there's cost to that. So I think it, it, we really have to look closely at it. Fan of open source, but it needs to be thoughtful, careful, and we would need to do a full budget and impact assessment on that. My, my only last question for the correspondence that we'll be sending is just how much do we spend on proprietary software code as a city? <laughs>